Now I'm about to give you some real knowledge you don't get in college. All right, let's talk about a game changer, making money, your money, work for you. No more working 60-hour weeks just to get by or stuffing cash underneath the mattress. We're talking about investing, letting your money go to work while you sleep, eat, and binge watch your favorite shows. This isn't a quick, rich, you know, scheme. It's about being smart, steady, and patient. So here's a crash course on how to invest and build wealth over time. So number one, you're going to set your goals and get your foundation right. First things first, you've got to know what you're working towards. What are your goals? What are you saving for? You know, are you saving for retirement, buying a house, building wealth, or just creating a financial cushion? Knowing your goals helps you choose the right investments. Next, get your financial foundation solid. This means having an emergency fund, you need at least three to six months worth of living expenses set aside before you dive into investing. Because if something goes wrong, like a car, repair, job loss, or medical bill, you don't want to have to pull money out of your investments. Let that money grow undisturbed. So, step two, understand the power of compound interest. Now, let's talk about the magic sauce of investing. Compound interest, this is where your money makes money, and then that new money makes more money, and so on. You know, it's like a snowball rolling down the hill, just getting bigger as it goes, you know. That's compound interest. So, imagine you invest $1,000 and earn 10% return, which is about average for the stock market over the long run. In the first year, you'd have 1,100. But in the second year, you're not just earning on that original 1,000, you're also earning on the 100 you made. Over time, this compounds and grows, you know, just humongous. That's how small amounts turn into big amounts. If you let them sit long enough. Three, let's start with low cost index funds and ETFs, all right. Now, to where you actually put your money. For beginners, one of the easiest and safest ways to start investing is through index funds or ETFs, exchange-traded funds. These are collections of stocks or bonds that track the performance of of a specific market index like the SP500, which includes 500 of the biggest companies in the U.S. Why are these good? They're diversified, meaning your money is spread across a lot of companies instead of just one. Plus, they have low fees. You don't want to be paying high fees that eat into your returns over time. The goal is to keep your money working for you, not some Wall Street hot shot, right? An index fund basically says, hey, I'll take a little bit of everything, and when the market goes up, you go up. When the market goes down, sure, you'll go down too, but historically, the market has gone up over the long term. So think of it as riding the wave of the entire market instead of gambling on one specific company. All right. Now, step four, diversify, diversify, diversify. All right. We've touched on diversification, but let's get a bit deeper. Diversification means spreading your money across different types of assets so that if one goes down, You've got others that might go up. Think of it like having a backup plan. In the investing world, it's the equivalent equivalent of not putting all your eggs in one basket, right? Like they say, you can diversify across different assets, classes, stocks, bonds, real estate, precious metals like gold, industries, tech, health care, financial, and even geographic U.S. international markets. This way, you're not relying on any one thing to carry all the weight. Right. Step five, learn about different types of assets. Now, let's talk about the major types of investments. Stocks. When you buy a stock, you're buying a small piece of a company. If the company does well, the value of your stock goes up. Now, stocks have historically given the best returns, but they can also be the most volatile. They go up and down, but over time, they tend to rise, right? Bonds. Bonds are basically loans you give to a company or the government and they pay you interest. And they're generally less risk risky than stocks, but the returns are also lower. 
Bonds can be a good way to balance out the risk of stocks in your portfolio, right? Real estate. Investing in real estate can be a powerful way to grow wealth, whether through property appreciation or rental income. If you don't want to buy actual property, you can invest in real estate investment trust, right? Which lets you invest in real estate without having to deal with tenants or toilets, right? And number four, let's say uh, precious metals. Gold and silver are often seen as a safe havens, right? When the stock market gets bumpy, they won't make you rich overnight, but they can add a layer of security to your portfolio, right? Crypto, cryptocurrency like Bitcoin are the wild child in the investment world. High risk, high reward. If you want to dabble in crypto, only invest what you're willing to lose and treat it as a small high risk part of your portfolio, right? Um, stay consistent and be patient. Investing is not about making a quick buck. It's a long game. The best thing you can do is stay consistent. Consider dollar cost averaging, which is just a fancy way of saying you invest a fixed amount of money at a regular you know, intervals like $100 every month. When prices are high, you buy a bit less. When prices are low, you buy a bit more. Over time, this smooths out the bumps in the market, right? And here's the hard part. Be patient. It can be tempting to panic when the market goes down or to chase the latest hot stock, you know, when you hear about it on TV. Don't. Stick to your plan. And remember, time in the market is better than trying to time the market. The people who make the most in investing are those who hold on for the long term and let compound do its magic. So you want to reinvest your earnings. When you start seeing returns, whether it's dividends from stocks or interest from bonds, reinvest them. Don't cash out your gains. Put them back to work so they can keep growing. Reinvesting helps compound your returns faster and keep your investment snowball rolling down the hill. Keep learning and adjusting as you grow. Finally, investing is a journey. You don't have to know everything right now. You know, start small, learn as you go, and keep adjusting. As your goals change, your strategy might change too. Just don't get overwhelmed by the financial lingo or flashy headlines. There are plenty of free resources, online courses, and YouTube channels that break down investing basics. Take advantage of them and don't hesitate to seek out advice when you need it. Over time, you'll get the hang of it and investing will come second nature. I mean, you take money out of your checks, you won't even miss it, right? So, that's the playbook. Set your goals, start with index funds, diversify, learn about different assets, stay consistent, and let compounding do its thing. It's about being smart, steady, and letting time and strategy work their magic. The truth is, investing isn't just for Wall Street insiders or billionaires. Anyone can do it. The earlier you start, the better, but it's never too late to get your money working for you. Make the decision. Start small. And watch out, even a little investment today can lead to big results down the line. Now that's real game. Hit that like and subscribe button.